Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In this video tutorial, we will be testing our API methods for product controller. In the last video tutorial, we created all the required methods, and in this video tutorial, we'll make sure that these methods are working fine. The first thing that we want to do is edit our methods before we test them. Since we know that in order to update the product and delete the product, we need to specify the ID of the product. And we need to mention to our method that where it's going to get the ID of the product from, it's going to get it from the route. But where inside the route the ID will be located, we have not specified that. And to do that, what we want to do is go ahead and specify it here. The ID will be located after the method's name, action method's name. So now the method knows that when it needs to locate the ID, it will find it after the method name. So we can do the same thing here for the delete option as well. And that should be it. Now let's go ahead and run this application. So let's copy the URL of our application, open Postman, and test our API methods. Since we don't have a form to add, update, or delete a product, we will use Postman application to do that. First thing, you need to change the protocol to post, then add the URL of our controller, which is API forward slash product forward slash the action methods name which is get products now let's go to header and then add the content type to application json go to the body and change this option to raw and inside the body we will specify the properties of our new product that we want to add so let's go ahead and create an array where we'll specify the name, description, the out of stock, which is whether the product is stock or not, which is true or false, which is a boolean, the price, and one more option, which is the image URL. So in case if you miss to add one of these properties, please note when you go back to your product model, that all these properties have a required attribute on them. So the method will not execute and you will get an error saying that there was a problem to add the product. Therefore, all the required options should be specified in your API call. So let's just add some random string is image URL. Now let's go ahead and submit this request and let me also go ahead and put a breakpoint on the uh, add product method. And also I made a mistake here so let's change this to add product. Now let's go ahead and test this so let's hit send. Now the breakpoint is hit and we will see the information that is supplied by our form of our Postman application by just hovering over this form data object and then look at this. We have all the options. It has mapped over the values to the product model properties. The product ID is zero. That's because the product ID will be auto-generated. Now let's go ahead and continue running this method. Now let's go back to Postman and we have a response saying product was successfully added. 
that's the response we send when everything goes fine. Now also to check if the product was added, we will open our database. So have your Azure Data Studio and just let's run and see we have the new product now with ID 7. Let's add it on to our database table. Since we set the option to false, it is zero, the out of stock option. So now let's go ahead and test the update product method. And to do that, let's go back to Postman API, open a new tab, change this protocol to put, because this method is using an HTTP put protocol. Next thing we want to do is get the values that we want to edit, set the headers, which will be content type to JSON. Inside the body of the product, under the option raw, we will add the information that we want to edit. So let's change this to 2018 and this to 300 image URL of product this to 1000 this to true now in order to edit this we need to specify the id of the product in the url so the id of our product is 7 so what we want to do is specify 7 over here and now the id will be accessed by the route and now let's go ahead and hit send and execute this method. Oh, I forgot to change the name of the product methods, which will be update product. And now if I hit send, we will have access to this method. And if you hover over the ID, we'll have the ID seven. And on the form data, we'll have the options that we receive that we need to update. So let's go ahead and continue running this. Go back and we have received that the product was with the ID seven was updated. Now that's the message that we sent. Now let's double check in our database if it was updated. So we changed the option to 2018 we change the option to 300. This we change from false to true and here. So everything works fine, so the product was updated. Now let's go ahead and check the delete product method. I'll go back here and now let's copy this URL. We want to delete the same product, so we'll leave the ID as it is and we'll change the protocol to delete content type for our headers is going to be I don't, you don't need to provide the content type it's just that it's nothing wrong if you do that and now we don't need to do anything inside the body all we are sending is that we want to delete the product with the i7 so that's it now let's hit send. Our application delete product was not deleted once again. We have to change this option to delete product. The method name was not changed, so let's go ahead now and hit send. Now I have the option here and I have received the ID which is seven from my route. Continue running this method. Now if I go and check the products with ID seven was deleted. Now if I go and check the option in Azure Data Studio, this product should be deleted. So let's run this and now product seven, with the ID seven has been deleted. So all three methods are now working fine. We have tested them by calling them with our Postman API application.
now all we want to do is go ahead and implement authorization and authentication attributes that's because we want to make sure that the user is logged in and the user has an administrator role in order to delete the products and we will implement role based authorization and we will implement authentication in the next video tutorial.